Whiplash, a neck injury that can occur when the head suddenly moves forward and then backward. In weather, it is a term for describing an extreme event that includes shifts between two opposing weather conditions over a short period of time. Such as a 90 degree day followed by a sub-freezing snowstorm 24 hours later. It sounds impossible, but it actually happened in the Denver suburbs on September 8th and 9th, 2020. And only three days later, it was back in the 80s and sunny. That is the temperature equivalent of just having a random snowstorm in the middle of the summer heat in July. For literally everyone else right now, it's approaching late February, and it's a very interesting yet emotionally taxing time of year. You have this dark, gloomy, frozen, snowy period between January and early February, and all of a sudden it's 50 degrees and sunny for a day. And you think to yourself, oh, spring, you're finally here. And then there's an ice storm. But there's truly nothing like that first warm day in February to help push you through the rest of the winter. So today, let's take a look at the big picture of why this February weather whiplash occurs. In January, high pressure from Canada dominates over the Midwest, pushing the jet stream and cold air further south. Along this temperature boundary, we find our old friend, the mid-latitude cyclone, which moves from west to east beneath the jet stream. The cyclone has a warm front stretching out to the east and a cold front stretching to the south. As it moves from west to east, the cold front begins to catch up to the warm front, creating an occlusion. To the northwest of the low center, you get very cold air, strong winds, and the heaviest snow. To the southeast, you get the warmer air and possibly severe weather if the conditions are right. In late February, the dominating cold air starts to weaken a bit, just enough to where the jet stream can occasionally surge to the north. This brings the cyclone along with it, allowing the warm front to sweep through areas that have been stuck in the 20s for weeks. But this warmth is always short-lived because directly behind the warm front is the very strong cold front where the temperature can plunge from 60 to 20 within a 40 mile gradient. As February spills into March, this whiplash continues to happen, but the warm front gets a little stronger and the cold front gets a little weaker. April is the time when we see the greatest temperature difference from day to day, as well as highs during the day and lows at night. The further south you are, the sooner you get to see the consistent warmth and the less whiplash you have to deal with, and the more jealous I am. Here in Ohio, it takes until about mid-May to get consistent 65 degree weather, so we got a long way to go. With climate change, modeling shows that whiplash will be strengthened, and we've already seen the effects. Certain air masses are larger, more intense, and stick over certain areas for a longer period of time. When they finally get pushed out of an area, the fronts that push them out are a lot stronger, and they can cause stronger storms, heavier rain, and greater temperature differences. A recent example of this happening is the formation of atmospheric rivers above California, which would bring really rainy periods, followed by really dry periods very close together. The extreme swings in weather can affect many aspects of our ecosystem, from increased crop mortality to even polluting the Midwest water supply. It appears that whiplash is here to stay, so from now on, expect the unexpected. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to help me reach a bigger audience, and I'll be uploading every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next Wednesday.